Hello everybody. Hello everyone. I'm happy to be here once again to be a blessing by sharing some things that have been in my heart. It's been a blessing to me and I thought it would be good to also share with every one of us. How have you been doing? How is life? How is your Christian walk with God? Today I want to talk about discernment. Because of the times that we are in and some personal experiences and the things that the Holy Spirit has been teaching me. The Word of God makes us to understand that we should walk circumspectly and not as fools. Understanding the will of the Lord, we should redeem the time for the days are evil. I want to thank God for the opportunity to be alive in a time like this and I believe that God has a plan for you and I and he has prepared us. All we need to do is to walk with him and continually encourage one another as we see the day approaching. So today I'm going to be talking about discernment. If you're like me, you know, that is determined to read, you know, the Bible this year, the whole of the Bible. Um, I'm not going very quickly, as quickly as I thought, I'm still in Genesis, but as I read through the book of Genesis, God gives me revelations, even from stories that you may have studied before. And so this is basically where I'm going to be focusing on today, Genesis chapter 27, verse 22 and 23. So it's a very popular story. It's about Isaac, the promised child who was now old and he was going to bless his eldest son who was Esau and he sent him to the field go and make, make me a very wonderful meal so that I can bless you well and you know he had a very his marriage you know had some issues because we could clearly see there was a lot of division you know in his family the wife Rebecca had heard what he told the eldest son and immediately she went to her favorites where you have favorites, there will always be problems. And so she went and told her son, Jacob, and said, Jacob, come on, go get a meal. I'm going to prepare a meal. This is what he, she, she prepared the script. And Jacob did a risk assessment and said, what if, what if, you know my skin, I'm not as hairy as Esau. And she said, let the cost be upon me if it doesn't work. She was so determined. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to dwell on that because there's a lot to analyze even from the story. I want to get to the point where Jacob responded to his mother and went on, and the mom told, mom told him, "Get the skin of a sheep, wrap it over yourself because you're not hairy. That could, that could suffice." And so Jacob was scared, but he made the move and took the savory meal to his father Isaac. In verse 22 and 23, that's basically one of the points I got this revelation. That one makes us understand that when Jacob brought the meal to his father, the father heard his voice. He said, who are you? He said, I am Jacob. I am Esau, your son, sorry. And the father also wanted to check and he said, come closer. And then he felt him. He felt him and he smelt him. And the Bible makes us understand he said something. And I'm going to put it plainly. He said, This is Jacob's voice, but Esau's hand. And verse 23 makes us to understand. He said he did not, he did not descend. And then the Spirit of God began to speak unto my heart. He said, Esau's hand, Jacob's hand voice so one of the things i want to bring out here is that this basically has to do with relationships because if you talk about esau we talk about jacob they were brothers members of the same family i'm also talking about isaac their father here so this basically is talking about relationships and the spirit of god began to impress in my heart about the need for us to be sensitive even in our relationships it could be your child it could be your husband or it could be your friend or whoever it is your sister because a lot of times, because of the times you are in, things are quite tough, things are quite hard. But God is saying, be sensitive in your relationships. Because 
one of the ways the devil will want to attack believers is through those that are close to you, those who are in a relationship with you. It could even be somebody in your office. It could even be your child. So first of all, they had a relationship, but there was a relationship. And the second thing you could see here, he says, this is Esau's hand. And the Spirit of God impressed in my hand and said, when you begin to see things, that naturally you, you know that this is not what it's meant to be, or this person is behaving in a way that is not normal. Or if somebody is saying something that is not in court, in line with the word, it's just not, this, this person is not just the way they are. Don't leave them the way they are. Don't just assume and begin to pick offense in your heart and walk away. Probably you, you begin to judge based on past experience. You always be said, be discern. He said, he said, he said, be discerning. Be discerning when it is Esau's hand. Esau's hand, that means this is the person I know. But when you hear a voice, and one of the ways to know, you know, what's going on on the inside often is in the voice, what is being said, things that are being done. And many a times for us, we miss it. We miss it as believers. Sometimes we are too busy, you know, or sometimes we are so, so stressed. And when you are very stressed, you are not patient enough to be discerning. Holy Spirit says it's time for us to, we need to be discerning. We should walk circumspectly and not as fools, redeeming the time for the days are evil. You see your child saying things, you know, just talking, being so negative. Sometimes they are stubborn. Don't just sit down and just sometimes you beat them up and all that. Sometimes be discerning. What voice am I hearing? What voice am I hearing? Is this Esau's voice? It might be your child, which is, um, it, 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 it could be Esau in court. And it may not be the right voice. It is time to rise up. We need to take our place in the realm of the spirit and begin to address. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers the word of god makes us to also know in second corinthians chapter 10 it says we are not ignorant of the devil's devices we are not ignorant ignorance is expensive in times like this because when you're ignorant when you wash things away and just assume you see what happened in the case of Esau, he did not discern and he went ahead yes because there was already there had been an exchange of the blessing and the birthright that was at work, but think about it. Jesus has already done an exchange. We have the bet right in Christ, but when we are ignorant, we will not enjoy the benefits of the cross. And God is saying we need to rise up and be discerning in our homes, be discerning in our relations, be discerning in your marriage. Sometimes your wife is responding in a way, and you get angry, you take offense, and then probably begin to do the silent treatment. It might be that that is. Jesus had, but you are hearing Jacob's voice. So what do we do in response to that? We need to rise up and begin to pray because the Holy Spirit wants to guide us. No matter how difficult the times are, the Holy Spirit is a provision God has given to us. It is an advantage that we have. I tell you recently, there were some things that happened and in the place of prayer, I tell you the truth. I just have to say, Lord, I need you to give me, I need you to help me. Because I found myself in a difficult situation. And that's the reason I'm sharing this. Because I could hear, I could hear Jacob's voice. But it was Esau's, but I, and I could feel Esau's hand. It was the Holy Spirit who helped me. And he gave me a word, which I have shared. It says, remember not. He just told me, do not remember the former things. Do not focus on it. It doesn't mean that you will not think about it. But it says, don't dwell there. And then I tell you, the word of God liberated me. And so I'm sharing with you today, I pray that this comes as a charge. I pray that this comes to stir your spirit, man, so you don't fold your hands. Oftentimes our children need us to speak God over them. We need to pray and pray over them. When you hear anything, any iota, any dot that does not align with the word, you know that there is something not okay. Even when you don't even feel anything, just keep speaking the word of God. And one more thing I want to share, aligned with this, talking about discernment. You know, the more I dwell on it, the more the Holy Spirit will expand this word in our hearts. And that's why we need to create time. I know life is very busy. 
We have to walk so we can eat. We have a lot of things pulling our time, but I tell you, our source of strength is in the Word of God. It's in the place of prayer. It's in the place of worship. It's in the, in the Word. We need to study the Word because God wants to rub off on us. He wants to empower us. He wants to strengthen us. So no matter what we see, because He has said, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. We need to stay in that place of peace. And it's only in the Word of God we can find peace. Hallelujah. If you go back to the story of Lazarus, Lazarus had been in the grave and Jesus Christ came and Jesus Christ told Lazarus to come forth from the grave. And Lazarus came forth. But there were still grave clothes. Lazarus was alive, yes, he had come out. But there were still things that wrapped him around. I know people may have different revelations about this. But what God was impressing in my heart and said, we need to, con to continually address any form of appearance of the grave. Jesus is no longer in the grave. Lazarus was no longer in the grave. But there, was, there were those clothes that needed to get, get out so that he could be free to be what God has said that he would be. So discernment would help us to address anything anything that is wrapped around people that we are connected to it might even be us and most of the times one of the things the devil does is throws he throws thoughts he throws strongholds strongholds they come as thoughts they occupy the mind and when you begin to hear those voices they fill your heart so strongly it looks like it is real you can't move but god wants to liberate his people he wants us to be discerning he wants us to open our mouths and speak forth, rebuke those thoughts, rebuke those powers. Growing up as a Christian, one of the things I learned is when it comes to spiritual warfare, even especially in relationships, and I thank God because it helped me so much. When there are issues, instead of you to first of all go and begin to fight and you know speak, you go and address that spirit, address the powers responsible. And that is one of the things God is tearing in our hearts today. Address those powers responsible. Not where the person is or whoever the people you are having issues with. You speak to them. Living and non-living things respond to the power that is in the name of Jesus. And I pray that as we arise in our offices, as we arise in our homes, we arise in our marriages to take our place. In the name of Jesus and the power of God be made manifest. We are not ignorant of the devil's devices, but we will be discerning in the name of Jesus as we rise up to take our place in the place of prayer. For those who fight on their knees, so Paul Panampes Paul says, have got victory in the spirit. The victory in the spirit needs to be shown in the physical, that we may enjoy the peace that God has given unto us. Those grave clothes don't need to be in our homes. Those grave clothes don't need to be even in our environment. And so today I'm going to say a word of prayer as we begin to declare victory over every situation in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, He that the Son has set free is free indeed. So have you been experiencing anything that doesn't look like, doesn't look like what you should be? That's what I'm talking about. Experiencing Esau's hand or Jacob's voice. The voice is not does not align. What is being spoken does not align with what you can see or what it should be. There will rise up. Hallelujah. The Bible says there is no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. Every tongue that is risen against us in judgment we shall condemn them. Therefore I implore you to arise, to be sensitive in the spirit. Not to just fold your hands and just explain things out. There will always be an, ex an explanation. But let our explanation be based on scriptures. Let our explanation align with what the Lord has spoken. Hallelujah. Let our explanation go in line with the expectation that comes from the word of God. Hallelujah. So, every Jacob's hand, or every Esau's hand experience, as in whatever is happening, that does not align. Every everything that doesn't align with the word of God in the name of Jesus today we take her position and I join my faith with yours. Whatever it is that is unsettling you, 
The Bible says the thief comes, but to steal, to kill. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So anything that is trying to destroy, anything taking away your joy, trying to kill that thing that God has given unto you, we stand against it in the name of Jesus. Every manifestation of Jacob's voice, anything that is manifesting itself, that does not tally with the word, you know in your spirit. I join my faith with you today and I come against it in the name of Jesus. We command the release over our homes, over our children, over our husbands. We come against every stronghold in the name of Jesus. And we declare freedom, freedom to be what God has spoken, what God has said that we should be in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Every child that is fighting with thoughts in their minds, fighting with strongholds that they don't understand, Lord God, we set them free. We, we pray over our children. We thank you for deliverance, Father. Thank you because your blood is speaking mercy for them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because we are free by reason of the blood in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, just want to thank you for the spirit of discernment. You have given us your spirit and so we will walk in the spirit. And victory is our portion on a daily basis in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. I want to believe that this has been a blessing. It's just a short video just to stir your spirit man up. I want to encourage you to keep the faith. Stay strong. I pray that we will have confidence and not be ashamed as it's coming. In his name we will win always. In Jesus' name. Till the next time is the voice of encouragement. Feel free to like um, feel free to subscribe and put on the notification, turn on the notification button. And I pray that God will continually strengthen us on this race. God bless you. Until next time. Bye now.